mid-April through mid-May love readings. My love readings run from the middle of the month to the middle of the next month because we have these videos here, the career and money readings, as well as your general readings already. And so this kind of keeps you on track as the month goes on. This is for your moon sign. And I know you're like, why? Why not my Venus? Why not my sun? This video right here is gonna tell you exactly why that is. Just trust me, it's gonna resonate more. Um, you'll know why if you watch that video or you know, just trust me, whatever. This month, I'm gonna use a couple different decks and my awesome assistant might kind of edit into the video here what that will, what they look like, okay? And then in the description box below, if you're wondering what that is, there's links there. Um, and if you click on the link and you wanna buy one, I, I'm not selling them, but it's their affiliate links, which is great for me because I have to make money, you know, as well. So hopefully that'll work. Uh, what else? Let's just get started, I guess, then. Um, so the way these love readings work is we're going to look at predictions for singles, couples, and then for those in it's complicated situations. So you might be polyamorous, you might be in an on again, off again relationship. Maybe you're just talking to each other, but you haven't really met yet because of coronavirus. And so you're wondering what that's gonna be like later, you know, when you can see each other, whatever. Um, I'm gonna break it into those three categories and we're gonna look at what the general vibe is this month, what you, um, really want, or at least what you think you want, then what do you actually need? What's going to be the best thing to happen in your love life this month? And then what's the biggest challenge going to be? And then kind of just overall general advice. So let's get started. We're going to start with singles, then move on to couples, and then do, um, for those of you in complicated situations, whether that means you're polyamorous, on again, off again, you're just talking, but it's not committed. Um, we're gonna do those last because sometimes pieces of the single and pieces of the couples will resonate for its complicated situation. So it's not that I love you less, but that's the reason why I do that last. Leo singles, what's your love vibe this month? Okay, so you should be asking for help from other people. Um, in regards to your love life. So do you want to try to build relationships and, you know, maybe weed a few out and decide who you're going to meet after quarantine with a dating app, but you don't usually use them? Ask friends who do. Um, ask friends to maybe put you in touch with a cute guy on their Facebook page or um, something like that. Or even asking for help from other people in regards to maybe what you should be looking for in a relationship and do they think you're ready or what should you develop first or whatever, whatever you feel like your issue is in regards to um, finding the love that you want for your life right now, uh, whether that is something permanent or casual, ask for help from other people with that. Because it seems like this month in particular, like the whole, uh, second half of April and the first half of May, you're going to have a hard time finding success on your own, okay? So what is it that you think you want from relationships and in your love life? And it's like a part of you thinks that you like challenges, that you want the hardship, the adversity, because, you know, almost like um, if you have to fight for something, if you have to earn it, then it's worth something, right? Like if it's just given to you, it's a little bit boring. You're a predator, not in like a bad way, but you know, like you're a hunter, you're a lion. And so you think that that's natural. Um, and you like that challenges help you learn. And that's not a bad thing, um, but it's probably not necessarily exactly what you need. So what is it that you need this month? Um, not to ask an expert or anything like that. Like, don't be afraid that anything is particularly fucked up with you and you're not capable of healthy relationships or finding the right match or something like that. It's more about just asking people who know you and, you know, have um, sort of that casual friend advice or, you know, from family members. It's not that serious, okay? So, um, what is going to be the best thing that happens in your love life this month? Well, the fact that, you know, there's a little bit of closed offness that you have, a little bit of walls up and resistance is a good thing. And so why is that? They said, because we said it was a good thing. Okay, but I'm asking why. And they go, because this gives you an opportunity to be super honest with yourself. 
um, to do self-reflection without the distraction of other people giving us attention, right? And kind of tempting us to go and chase something just for the fun of the chase as opposed to really wanting it. Like, for example, maybe you're on a dating app and you're talking to somebody just because it's something fun to do to get them to like you, but you really have no interest in them, right? It's that kind of thing. Um, so what will be, I don't know if you guys can see it in the video, but I can see it like with my naked eye. There are angel, there are angel orbs all up in this video. So this is important for you guys. So pay attention, okay? Um, what is going to be your biggest challenge? Understanding that happily ever after does exist and picturing it in your mind, what it looks like, what it entails. So that's important because if you're able to do that, I hope you really registered that part, okay? Because it sounds simple, but it's not easy to apply. If you're able to really register that and um, think about these things, then you can start manifesting them into your life, okay? And so if you don't know how to do that or where to start in the description box below, there's a link to the freebie section of my website. You don't have to put in any information like your email or anything like that. You just get the worksheet and you do it and you figure out exactly what you want and you start manifesting that life that you want, okay? Not just in relationships, but generally. The yellow one's for generally, the pink one is for in your love life, okay? So first thing, um, kind of coming to this place of understanding that not everything that is, um, what do they say, whatever's worth having is worth fighting for. Yeah, but like, it's also, we can cherish things without ever having to fight and go through that stress, right? I mean, if push comes to shove, sure, fight for something. But like, we don't need to fight before we have it. Maybe we fight to keep it or we fight through the challenges that we're presented with, right? But once we have it, but we don't have to fight in order to receive it, right? And that's the whole thing with the walls up and kind of like resisting that energy. We've got to change our mindset in that regard. Um, so what is this kind of like, the advice here for you. You know, look at your past. What really hurt you? Um, I mean, you already know that what didn't kill you makes you stronger and that what's coming for you that is new is better for you than anything in your past. But like, how do you want it to look? Like specifically, in which ways do you want it to be better? Okay. Now, coupled Leos. Your vibe is like, Maybe your relationship isn't super successful right now. That might be um, what's going on with you in your mind and in your heart. Or maybe your partner is harping at you saying that. But ask for help from other people on how to reframe the situation and mindset, okay? What is it that you think you want? Oh, this is so similar to um, singles. Like the vibes are the same, just playing out in different ways. You like the challenge because sometimes that makes you grow closer. You know, if there is struggle and challenge and disagreement, that's how we learn about our partner. And that's how we form deeper bonds and connections. And you know, we ourselves grow, but then we grow together in our relationship. So we kind of think we like that struggle. And we kind of think that that is um, also where we really excel as a part of a team in a relationship, right? Like. Leos are fearless and they can tackle anything and um, they have a lot of confidence and, you know, oftentimes even a positive attitude. And so you can kind of um, help carry your partner and help them grow in times of struggle and challenge and of adversity. But um, this month, it's like, it's just really kind of not necessary, if that makes sense, just because that's something where we are, um, where it's kind of like a strength okay, doesn't mean it's something that we should be welcoming necessarily. So what is it though that you should be welcoming and what you actually need? Um, the idea that, you know, you do have good ideas, to acknowledge those. Not every thought you have is a shitty one, but a lot of times the thoughts that we have um, are like halfway there, okay? So digging deeper and then seeing what you're thinking and you know what your intuition is telling you from opposite sides, like an empathetic outside of your relationship type of view of a situation or a position that you take. And that's why asking for help from other people is important, you know, um, getting their opinions. Um, and then 
it also says, you know, you kind of just need a good cleansing cry and nothing has to be sad or, you know, like um, super frustrating to bring you to the point of tears, but it's like cathartic. It's like to wash your own energy away, kind of like how um, you can set intentions when you step into a shower to clear your energy fields, your aura um, and your spirit and all of that. And so, um, I mean, go ahead and cry in the shower. Like nothing has to be wrong, but they say like if you can actually like get your ugly cry on, that um, that will help you to let things go, to release a lot of subconscious shit that maybe we've been carrying around with us for a long time, which actually helps bring those walls down and helps us to be, um, even though you're a super loyal, devoted, like open hearted, big hearted sign, it helps you to kind of connect even more and on a deeper, more, um, intimate level with your partner. So what's the best thing that's going to be happening in your relationship? Well, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? That maybe a little bit of challenge occurs and then we grow from it. But um, we are growing, we're focusing on our own growth this month instead of the growth of the relationship and us together. Because if you focus on you, then the relationship is going to just kind of grow and get better on its own because your walls are coming down and then it gets deeper and tighter and more intimately connected. So um, that's important for you. What's your biggest challenge? To be brutally honest with yourself and with um, your partner and not brutally in like a rude way, but just like very deeply honest. It can come across very sweet and loving, but it has to be super clear and honest. Honest with yourself, honest with your partner. Um, the guidance overall then is, you know, focusing on what does happiness look like for you in the future? Um, what does fun and exciting and joyful look like for you in the future? What do you, what makes a relationship happy? What makes you happy apart from the relationship? What makes you happy in the relationship? And I'm talking about you specifically, not your partner, okay? We're not focusing on them right now the whole end of April and beginning first half of May, this is all about you and what brings you joy. Because when you identify that, you can manifest more of that into your relationship and into your life and then everything grows and gets better for you in the relationship as a kind of um, welcomed side effect, okay? So for those of you in complicated situations, what's the vibe? This is a perfect opportunity for you to do what? To look at relationships where you don't feel emotionally connected and attached and think about how it's satisfying you. If it's not satisfying you, cut it loose. If it's satisfying you just sexually, well then identify it for what it is, okay? Be okay with that. And then just use it for what it is, but make sure you're super clear and honest and open in this complicated situation with everybody else. So what is it that you think that you want? Whoa. And they're saying, um, they're like, hey, sidebar, before we talk about what you think you want, there's a challenge here for you to be thankful um, for the opportunities that you have in your life and all of that. And um, for those of you who are into females, um, you should, something about like, there's a challenge in appreciate, excuse my vulgar language in advance. There's a challenge in appreciating the pussy you're given is specifically how they say it. So maybe that's how some of you define it. And um, they are specifically referring to that, but even if, Okay, so then if you're not into females, okay, if you're not attracted to females, if you don't have sex with females, on the other side, if you are, if you have female genitalia, then again, this is vulgar, but I mean, this is what they say. People think it's weird, but angels like do actually give very explicit sex advice sometimes in personal readings. Um, so... I had a reading once that was personal, sidebar, but I think some of you will think this is interesting, that gave a very detailed description of exactly how to give a handy to this woman's husband, like exactly how he wanted it. And he loved it after she did it. So anyway, that's what I'm saying. Like, 
don't don't be a hater and pretend like I'm just making shit up on the fly because I'm not. Um, so what they're saying, those of you who have female genitalia and are getting eaten out and you like it, make sure you let them know that you like it or um, that you're thankful for that, that you appreciate it so that you keep getting it. OK, and that might not be the case for many of you because you are um, social distancing or whatever. But, you know, when we come back to, you know, maybe there will never be normal times, but a new normal where we're not distancing. Um, something to think about. OK, but I mean, if you're getting it now, that's the point. OK, so that was the sidebar. So anyway, um, what is it that you think you want in your complicated situation? You're like change, but you're a little bit afraid of it. Understand that changing, um, or wait, understand that nothing can grow or evolve without movement. Yeah, change is the only constant, right? And I mean, it would be horrible if we never changed. The things you really wanted when you were five or six years old, if you, <laughs> the way you envisioned your adult life, if you lived that life right now, you would hate it and you would be really embarrassed, okay? So that's the whole point here. Be open to change, don't fear it, okay? Um, you think you want change, but you're a little afraid of it. So what is it that you actually need in your complicated love situation? To put your fucking phone down. Do you see that? Look, I'm not kidding. That's what it says. Um, all of this screen time, all of this texting, all of this sexting, all of this like whatever. It's making you awkward and it's making you sad. Um, I mean, it would be awesome if we could talk to a live person but maybe we can't right now. And so, you know, find something else to do. What should you be doing? They're like anything that challenges you a little bit, even if you don't love it. <laughs> okay. So it could be, you know, a puzzle. It could be a math problem. It could be sorting your closet. It doesn't really matter, but you got to put it down because um, I think it's potentiating any discomfort in this complicated situation it's making things more weird not only for you but for them which and that's going to carry over into the second half of may june and june the first half of june okay so what is the best thing that is going to happen to you in your love life this month that you're going to start thinking about things in broader terms and you know you might start looking outside of this complicated situation for other partners or for something different, and that's okay. Um, you ha And I think this is part of the reason why they're like, put your phone down, because, sorry, I'm looking over here, but there's like a um, like a little angel in in the corner by the door, and I don't, it's just weird. It's catching my eye because it's not like full size, it's like crouched. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, let's, that has to be part of your reading. Why are they doing that? Oh, um, <laughs> to, they're saying like they shrunk themselves in order to show you what your energy looks like when you're on your phone all the time you're like dark and hidden like a little hermit in the corner when really your energy as a leo or at least a leo moon right is vibrant exciting full of passion and so if you get up and you move your energy and you just put your phone down a little bit then you start to feel differently because your psychology follows your physiology a lot of the time so that's important okay so back to where i was um you know where was i actually actually so you're supposed to put your phone down the best thing that was going to happen in your love life. Oh, yeah, that you were going to look around and see what else is out there. Because when you're really focused on what's in front of you here in this complicated situation, like I said, it's making you feel sad and kind of shitty. And so it's like going back to that whole thing about changing your energy so that it's like you don't necessarily need to leave this situation if you don't want to. Stay in it if you want. But maybe change the way you're approaching it. Does that make sense? So what is going to be the biggest challenge for you to actually get up and move around and do those things, to find something exciting and adventurous to do, okay? It might even be hard for some of you. I don't know why they're getting vulgar with you guys, but um, it might be hard for you, some of you to masturbate, but I think that would be helpful. As long as you don't go to sleep right after, you stand up and you do something. Like allow it to recharge you instead of to like, 
further relax you. And I'm not calling you all lazy or anything like that, but there is this definite need to find something exciting that moves your actual body around and not in like exercise way. Like, I mean, if you love exercising, sure, but um, I don't know, like maybe you wanna build a shelf or paint your bathroom, whatever. So what is the general guidance for you that, you know, it's going to be hard to emotionally connect in a very deep and intimate way with others, um, especially if you're not moving around. And so, you know, you can talk all day if you want. And like you have this idea that it's somehow going to fix things and make you feel good and make you feel better about whatever your situation is. Not that it's bad, but um, it really isn't going to do that. OK, they're like, let's be honest here. That's, that's the biggest takeaway. Let's be really honest that it's really not going to make anything better. It's going to just kind of stay the same at best. It could just make things worse. So love you so much and I'll see you next month.